Hey guys, how's it going? Oh god, I just got something in my eye. As I turned on my... Oh, it's this hair. And... I think I might be getting a package in a minute. No problem there. Um... I ended my last video um, saying that I would talk about goals. And you might go, another video about goals, I hear that all the time. I know I need to make goals, I know I need to write it down. Okay, I've heard the same things and I've said the same things. And I've thought I've had my goals and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna tell you what has made such a huge difference in, in this whole aha moment I've had, several of them, um, the past couple of months as I've been vacationing, if you will, not really vacationing, but vacationing from blogging and vlogging and doing all of my usual stuff. I guess I'm not getting a package. What's up with that? People, I really like getting packages. Please go to my Amazon wish list and just send me stuff. Okay, what, did I just say that out loud? What does this say in the back? Universe knows. Oh shit. I almost poured that on myself. You see what this is? Water with lemon. I have, did I say that in one of my last couple of videos? Um, really pushing, making sure I'm getting my water in for the skin, okay? It's easy to get our skin dried out, whether we're just old like me or um, it's winter and it's very dry. Um, water for your skin, water for your weight loss, water because you're supposed to, okay? But anyway, I actually am very surprised. I really enjoy just hot water with lemon, and I put ginger in it. I didn't put ginger in this because I didn't have time. But um, kind of getting my water in a variety of things, room temperature, this does not excite me. I mean, I'm just not gonna lie. Looking When I work out, I love to chug water. But when I'm just hanging out, I'm like, hey, what, what's up, I want something to drink. Oh, I'd love some water. That's something I would never say, okay? I drink it because I'm supposed to and it's good for me. Now, what I am excited about is I'm gonna be learning, now you might laugh at this, I'm gonna be learning how to make tea because this is just hot water. But I know that in the past when I've tried to make tea, yes, I've tried to make tea, it hasn't turned out the way I want. I don't, did I talk about, I know I talked about this in one of my last videos. I don't like, um, you know, raspberry tea or orange tea. It just doesn't, it's, it's always been something to me you drink when you're sick. Um, I had a meeting this past week with the folks that um, founded this company. Can you see this? Is it coming up? There's a little bit of a glare. It's Nourish Tea. Maybe it will show up better. Is that too, it, I don't know if you can see that. It seems like it's glaring. Um, so this is, if I'm correct, hold on, um, ugh, there's a tape on it. These are the smaller ones. I, oh, look, there's a little can. Can you see that? Um, Buddhist monks use their amazing skills at Master Herbalist, as Master Herbalist over the eight, over 800 years ago to create matcha. Is that how you say it? Matcha? It was originally used before meditation to help in mental awareness and clarity. Um, anyway, I'll tell you more about this. This is organic tea. I believe it's all loose leaf tea. Let me see. Loose leaf organic fruit blend. So uh, just to give you a little preview, there's sweet berry breeze. Oh, this one's open. Maybe I opened this earlier. Oh, that's nice. This is minty igloo. See this? Hold on. Uh, Duke of Earl. Yummy Chai. Crimson, no idea how to say that. Um, crimson Rui Bice, whatever. The Emerald Path. And then uh, this is the Minty Igloo that I told you about. And then this is Sweet Berry Breeze. And then this is the Matcha. Now, when I talked with these, he also sent me this. But he wrote me today and he's like, how do you like it? And I said, I'm not making it yet until you tell me how to make it. I bought some tea from a brand uh, that I discovered when I was up in Seattle. I think I mentioned this on one of my last videos, so please forgive me if it's repetitive. But I went out with uh, for sushi with Chris and they had the best tea. And when I'm at sushi places, I love to have just green tea. 
Long story short, it's never a long story short with me. It's always long story long. Um, I bought the tea, tried to brew it at home, and it didn't have the flavor that I had there, and I ended up having to put like four of the loose leaf bags in the, um, in the um, cup. And I'm like, there is no way that I'm supposed to put three of these bags in here, three or four, just to get the flavor out of it. So I told Avi from um, this, uh, from Nourish Tea, he's gonna explain to me how I do it at home. In fact, I added something to my Amazon wish list. It's the actual teapot that they serve the tea in. I don't think they brew it in it, but they serve the tea in it. It's like um, a ceramic, very heavy. They serve it at my sushi place, and then you pour it out, and it has two little black cups. Um, I like that idea. I like the idea of making tea and putting it in your little tea and uh, thingy, and then I could keep it in my desk and have tea all day. I could drink tea all day, and obviously then with tea, I don't put anything in it. I don't put sweetener in it. I don't put cream or anything else in it. It's just, and let's be real, it's just water. So I'm looking forward to doing more of that. That said, as I finish my coffee. I'm never gonna not like coffee, but I'm all about new ways of hydrating. Because I've been really bad, really bad about hydration um, the latter part of this year. And I, I paid for it. I paid for it in my, um, my athletic performance. I certainly saw that my skin was starting to get just, you know, dried out. Um, and that too was also I wasn't doing my skincare routine like I was, making sure that I did my skincare. You know, I use um, Arbonne and I would, you know, do the, the whole thing in the morning, the whole thing in the evening, and I wasn't doing my exfoliating masks and stuff like that. So I'm back to all of that stuff, paying attention to myself and, you know, learning about new things. Now, the thing about gold, this might, <laughs> I'm just even going to stop saying that this is going to be a brief, uh, brief vlog because they never, never really are. Um, here's... The, probably the biggest difference for me that is making such a difference across all areas of my life is this whole concept of goals. Now again, I said in the beginning of the video, some of you might hear go, oh, she's talking about goals, I've heard her talk about this before, blah, 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 everybody knows, you're supposed to write your goals down, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things, people, that we can know and we can be aware of, but we don't really do, okay? I was just talking to my dad last night about a very similar concept. Um, meaning, I'm trying to think of what I share, what I don't share, so that I don't go way too off tangent. We all know we're supposed to have goals, okay? And, and I've certainly been in the place, let's talk about with diet and weight loss and muscle growth. Um, I've certainly known in my head what I want. I've known what phys type of physique I like. I know, you know, I read, I, I read all the fitness magazines, I read all the books, I read blogs, I've, you know, I've founded a company around this, I know all the stuff, but you know what, if, and I've heard it said a million times, so it's not that I haven't been exposed to this sentence or this concept, that, you know, if you really don't, if, what are they, what's the word, how do they say it, um, it's not a word, an adage, if you, um, a goal without a plan is just a wish, something to that effect, and I'd be like, oh yeah, whatever you say, I know what I want, I'm working on it, whatever. Here's the thing, I'm seeing it more crystal clear than ever now. Why? Because I started to, I told you this before, um, the end of the summer and early fall, I started to just have a really rough time personally. It was a rough time for me getting really, really overwhelmed with the business, really, Kind of, I just, let me summarize. I, I had the, just a lot of business stress, a lot of personal stress uh, and, and um, emotional drama going on with certain people and, um, you know, things that not everybody knows about, right? And then, so there's work, there's this, and then there's this Achilles thing that just deflated so much of what I was doing. I felt like I was, you know, on this way and then it's like, stop everything. And it was this overall feeling of, and I, for the first time in a long time, was getting up every day with dread. Just, just dread. Um, dread about the pressure that was on me. Dread about being frustrated with other people. Dread about, you know, why am I, why am I doing all of this? You know, just frustration and dread. And then, of course, it was the weather that was changing. You know, I'd get up and I'd look out and I'd be like, now. I'm sharing this with you guys because so many of you 
follow me and you're like, Kelly, you're always so happy and, and perky and whatever. No, I'm not, you know, but I do know I've been through enough crap the past five years in particular. I've learned how to bounce back. I've learned how to pick myself up and I surround myself with people that, you know, won't let me stay down. Um, but a lot of it has to be on us. It has to be a choice. Now, as I started to get this feeling of, and, and it was really intense. I hadn't felt that way in a long, long time where it was just, it wouldn't go away. You know, I was almost going, am I starting to get depressed? You know, what's going on? Just overwhelming, you know, disappointment with people and things with the business. And it's just frustrating. And I felt too, and, and this is I think when people can get really frustrated, when you feel like there's no way, there's no way out, you know. It's kind of like I remember when I had my appendix out and I had appendicitis and I'm in the hospital and I had to stay because, you know, I, I usually you go in for your appendix out and they let you out the next day, but I remember my stomach was bloated, it was like up to here. And they're like, you can't leave until you pee, <laughs> it's so gross, pee, poop, and fart. And I'm like, what? I mean, those are like, any, anybody that knows me knows that anything to do with bathroom stuff just grosses me out. There was something wrong with me and I couldn't do any of the above. And so I was there and I just wanted someone to come in and pop my stomach. You know, it was just, I, I wanted to pee. I wanted to like have my stomach popped. I wanted to go home and I couldn't. I was so not in control, but I just wanted some kind of release from this insane situation. And in, in a figurative way, that's how I felt before. But as I started to, again, it's what I said on my blog post. And I'm gonna do another blog about it because there's different ways to work backwards. But, you know, it's, it's very simple. If you talk to a therapist or a psychiatrist or whatever, typically what they're gonna do is a lot of what I'm saying you can do with yourself, which is you, you work backwards and, and you ask yourself the questions that a therapist or a doctor or a friend might ask you. It's like, I'm so frustrated, I'm not happy. Why are you not happy? Well, I feel stressed. Why do you feel stressed? I feel so stressed because of this, 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 and this. Okay, well, let's look at this. You know, this is what my friend Kelly did with me when I was down in Miami two years ago and I decided, you know, I came back from that trip because she helped talk me through some of this stuff about, you know, here's what we knew I needed to do. I needed to sell my house and take that huge financial burden off of myself so that I was able to quit my job and build the business full time. Okay, everything has steps to it. So you, you work, when I say work backwards, that's what you do. But the other thing that I started to realize was, you know, and, and when I went down to Miami, I started to see things clearly. Like, I came home and I, I said, I, this is what I want to do. I've talked about it before, but I've never decided to do it. And I know this is something Tony Robbins refers to a lot. He says, change isn't going to happen until you really decide. And you might say, that's stupid. You know, I decided I wanted to lose weight 10, you know, 10 weeks ago or 10 years ago, and I still have it. Well, you didn't really. You know, I've had the idea that I want to move to Florida. I've talked about it before, but I never really gave it any specific deci decision, and I certainly didn't share it with anybody. I might have talked about it. But there's a big difference between when I came home and I said, I'm doing this. So I'm moving to Florida, and me moving to Florida can't just be an idea. I can't just say, well, my lease is up in August, and at that time, all things are magically gonna come together. And, and I can just pick up and, and move, because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of details that have to happen. So that's what really started me. I, I started to go, okay, and I, I started to look at houses just on realtor.com when I was down there. And I realized I'm gonna be looking if I want to get a house, significantly you know higher than I originally had had planned and so then you have to make a decision there okay the cost of the cost for me to do this is, is is here am I still interested in doing it yes okay so if I need this much and my goal is to get down there and, and pay cash for my house and to also be going down there debt-free um, you know I've been running a startup so I've been living off credit cards for a while I didn't pay myself for a year and a half um, so I have credit card debt I want to pay off. Um, you know, how do I get to the point where I can go down there and, and feel no burden? That, that's the goal. You can't just say, yeah, I'm going to work towards that. What's your plan? 
it, that's why I was saying in my last video, you gotta get real with yourself and not just go, oh, I think I need to lose like five or 10 pounds. You need to figure out where you are now and where you want to be. So if this is where you are now with weight and this is where you wanna be, then you figure out the plan that, to get you from here to here. This might sound really simple, people, but too many people go, oh yeah, I think I need to lose five or 10 pounds. And so then they just start you know, eating better with no plan. And then it gets to be, you know, spring break, and they go to put their bathing suit on. They're like, I've lost any weight. I've been working so hard. First of all, maybe you get on the scale, or maybe you, you put your clothes on, and that's the first time you put your clothes on, your summer clothes, um, since the summer before. And so you can put them on and, and go, well, well, you didn't have a baseline. You know, that word baseline is really important. You have to have something where you're working from, and then you measure it. So for me, let's, let's take it back to me moving to Miami. I sat there and I'm like, okay, here's the cost of, I love the sun, here's the cost of the house I want. And then, you know, here's the other thing I started to do. Tony Robbins says this, anybody who's a good advisor will say this to you. Our tendency is to say, my mom does this, a lot of people I know do, does this. Um, they'll go, well, you know what, I'm older, I, I don't need to look like I'm 20, so I don't need to be my perfect weight. I'll be happy if I just get here. Or people will say with their jobs, I'll be happy if I just made a little bit more. Well, there's nothing wrong, it's not greedy to say you want to be at your optimal weight. It's not greedy to say, you know what, if this is what I want to have for cash, let's just let's put a random figure out there. Let's say I want to make a million dollars in cash. Okay, you might go, why does one person need to make a million? Okay, I'm just putting a number up there. Your human tendency would be to go, well, I really, I'll be fine with just this, so let me shoot for, so if a house is gonna be 100,000, say you're gonna shoot for that, you're gonna shoot for the lowest kind of house. 100,000, again, I'm just using random samples, random numbers, and then you're like, well, I gotta pay my debt off, so really, all, all I need, because what you're doing is you're scared that you can't do it. Don't kid yourself. If you, if you say, well, no, that house is $750,000, but I don't, I don't need to go that high, so I'm just gonna settle, I'm gonna go for 150, and then, okay, so that, you know, that's much more reasonable to shoot for 200, saving $200,000 than a million. Well, no, it's not, and it's just easier, and it gives you less to shoot for, and you don't have to go that far, and, and then if you're only aiming here, you're only going to go there, maybe. Or if you're only aiming here, maybe you'll only get there. What? How do you know you can't aim here? Maybe you'll get here, but that's a lot higher than here. I mean, I, I'm seeing this so clearly, but either way, maybe if we're talking about houses or savings or whatever or weight loss, maybe it's 20 pounds, maybe it's $100,000, maybe it's $5 million, whatever it is, stop thinking less of yourself and giving yourself the easy way out. If you are really heavy and you say, oh, you know what, I don't need to have, I don't need to be in optimal shape. I just want to lose, you know, like just 10 pounds, I'd be happy. I just feel a little lighter. First of all, maybe you will say that, but I guarantee you once you lose 10 pounds, you will go further because you will feel better and you'll realize your potential and you'll want to do more and then you'll tell other people around you to do more. But, you know, let's, let's go back to weight loss or go back to the house example. So I came back and I realized, here's what I want to do. It's not going to happen on its own. And I know how fast this year has gone, people. Do you know how fast it's going to go from January to August? And I, what I'm not going to do is get to, the, to August and go, oh, well, uh, here's how much money I have in the bank and here's whatever. Because what I've done is what I've done the past year, which is to just not have a plan, get up every day, react to the day, try to squeeze in my workouts, try to squeeze in some, uh, you know, a massage here and there, try to squeeze in a trip down to Florida. You can do so much more when you plan it. And you really have to think it out, you have to work backwards, and you have to figure out what it's gonna take with saving money. I'm almost at 20 minutes, I gotta cut it 20 minutes. I'll go into this too in, in my next videos, but it has been such an eye-opener for me you know, say it's, if you work in sales, okay, you know that you make 3% commission. Figure out what you want to make next year and, and shoot high. If what you want to make is $50,000, you know, my dad was saying how he used to do, I never used to do this, people. I worked in sales forever. And you know what I did? I always took the jobs that gave me a much higher base salary 
and you know a certain amount of commission. But I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't work hard for my commission. My bosses would be like, oh, she's so cool. And I'd bring the deals in. I, didn't, I was not motivated because I didn't see the potential in myself to go for killing my commission. I brought in the business and half the time I would forego getting paid extra because I didn't see myself as being that person, as being that valuable. I see it differently now. Now, it's like I have goals and I've got a plan and I know exactly how I'm going to do it and I'm telling you, I'm going to blow it out of the water this year and that's why I'm, ex I'm excited to like share the clarification, share the clarity with you guys because it might sound simple, but it's not. But when you do get it and you implement it, it's like your whole world can change and it's pretty damn cool, right? I'll see you tomorrow.